Good morning. It is good to be here and it is good to introduce to you this morning's speaker. And I have to tell you that I am in love with this morning's speaker. <laughs> pastor Helen has been a pastor in the churches in Australia for a lot of years and uh, she continues to minister in different places even though she's now retired as a pastor and she continues to teach in the Berean School of Ministry and she continues to share the Word of God with us here this morning. Let's welcome my sweetheart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know how to begin now. Thank you for that welcome. Thank you for that introduction. I am embarrassed. <laughs> First, this morning, I want to thank the worship team. You know, we come in here each Sunday and the worship team lead us in songs that help us to refocus on Jesus. They help us to have faith. They help us to sing words that remind us that we are very special to our God. And they help to remind us of what our God has done for us and all of that builds our faith so that when we come to listen to the Word of God, we are ready to receive by faith what God has for us. In other words, we are very grateful for those who lead us to worship God. They work a very special ministry. Thank you. Thank you to all of them. Some of the songs that we sang this morning remind me of how wonderful the church is. In Ephesians, this is not my message, but in Ephesians, Paul tells the church at Ephesus something about God's secret. And he says to them, there is a mystery. God has a mystery that has been hidden for all time. It has been hidden. But now it is being made known. And it's like he has a, a curtain across and he says, now God wants to show you what the secret is. And he pulls and he opens the curtain. And there is the great mystery that God loves. And you know what it is? It's the church. It's the church. And God says, this is what the mystery is. Because of what Jesus has done, Jew and Gentile can be one instead of being separate. In other words, all the people who are very different to each other can be one. That is the mystery. That is the excitement of what the church is. It's people who are different coming together to be one. So you look at the people at your table. They are different to you. Maybe if you were not in the church, you may never know that person. Maybe you are very poor and that person is very rich, or you are very rich and that person is very poor. Maybe you have very dark skin and that person has very light skin. Or maybe you are very young and that person is very old. You may never mix, you may never meet that person. But God says, here is the great mystery of what has been accomplished on the cross through Jesus. God says, I have made a way that all people who are separated from one another because of they are different... I have made a way for that difference to disappear and for all people through Jesus to become one. 
and to be brothers and sisters and to be the church here on earth. It doesn't matter what language they speak, whether they can speak Australian English very well or whether they make mistakes, whether they can speak Filipino, Ilongo or Tagalog or, or Filipino English or American English. All that is different, God has made a way to bring people together. And you know, in Psalm 133, he says that when people come together in unity, that is where he commands a blessing. So as you look around and you see people who are different to you, we celebrate. We celebrate that we are different because we represent the miracle that God brings different people together and makes them one in his family. It is a, a wonderful mystery. It has been hidden from the beginning of time, but through Jesus, God announces what the mystery is. The mystery is a church where people who were once separated can now be one family. Oh, it's so good. I want to read a story to you this morning that comes from the Gospel of John. It's a story about a man who is crippled. He's crippled in his feet, his legs. And he wants to be well, and he believes that God is able to heal him. But the problem is that even though he believes it, it just seems to be just out of his reach. So even though he believes that God can heal, it just never seems to be able to happen for him. And so he has learned to live believing that God can bring healing, but not really expecting that God would bring healing to his life. Let's read the story. It's John chapter 5, and I'm reading verses 1 through to 4. Some time later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. Now you can imagine there's a great number of people and all of them have problem, a serious problem. And they are all gathered here at this pool. Now, Bible scholars have a problem here. So I go to the King James, the New King James Version of Scripture to find verse 4. This is what it says. An angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. So all these people are here at this pool because they believe that when the water is stirred, if they are the first one in, then it doesn't matter what their disease is, they will be healed. So, maybe it was a legend, maybe it was a superstition, we don't know. But what we do know is that the people really believed that if they were here at the right time, they could be healed if they were the first one to get into the water. So this was a place of hope. There was hope that one day they could be healed in this place. Now there's one man who has been 
waiting for 38 years. He has been waiting, waiting, waiting. But you see, let's pick up the story at verse 5. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Oh, that's discouraging. For 38 years, he is sitting there thinking, one day, if I can get in first, I can be healed, but I have no one to help me. Someone else always gets in first. I will never be able to be first. I will never be able to be healed. So even though in his mind he knows that God heals and he can be healed, but in his experience, he is starting to think, it will not happen for me. It will never happen. I know God can do it, but God will not do it for me. This is his reality. So for him... He's in a difficult place. I don't know if you know a difficult place like this, but this is a difficult place. When you know that you need a healing in your body, or you know that you need a healing in your marriage, or you know that you need a healing in your family or in a relationship, or you need a healing in your circumstances, or it may be that you need a healing in your heart, but you wait and you wait and you wait and you begin to think, I know God can bring healing, but I don't think God will ever bring healing to me. And our faith just kind of falls out, falls away. Even though we know in our mind God can do wonderful things and we sing the songs of faith, we lose our sense of expectancy. It's a good question this morning. What are you expecting God to do today? Today, today, (laughs) what are you expecting God to do? Do you have an expectancy or did you just come to church thinking, oh, I will come, I will worship, I will hear the word and I will go home and nothing will change? God does not want us to be like that. That is why we have the wonderful worship. God wants us to come with faith. He wants us to come with an expectancy that what God has not done, even though he may not have done a healing for 38 years, today might be different. Today can always be different. You understand I am not saying to die. I am saying today, today can be different. It's my Australian English, I know. (laughs) Today, God has, can do what he has never done before. Today, when we come with expectancy, God is able to do something different. Now let's look at what happens here to this man. One 
very ordinary day. Just an ordinary day. Who thinks that today is an ordinary day? It's a Sunday, which is very special, but it's an ordinary day. And on this ordinary day, Jesus came along. He came to the man and he stops. We don't know why he stops. Maybe he is, feels sorry for him because it's, he's been uh, crippled for so many years. Maybe he feels sorry for him because he looks inside his heart and he sees disappointment. He sees the discouragement. He sees the despair. He sees the helplessness on the inside of his heart that has built up over the years while he has been waiting for his healing. Maybe he's looking at the internal things. But whatever the reason, it, we don't understand why, but we know that Jesus came to him on this day. He stops right there where this man is and he says, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Well, remember, this man is at the pool because that's where you go to get healing. That is the only place he knows where he can be healed. And so that is why he is here. But Jesus comes to him and says, do you want to get well. Now, I'm thinking that the man will reply, he will say, of course I want to get well. Of course, that's why I'm here. Yes, I want to get well. But he doesn't. Listen to his reply. He says, let me go back, find it. He says, sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else gets in before me. That's a strange answer. Do you want to get well? Sir, let me explain to you why I can't. Do you want to get well was the question. And his answer, instead of saying yes, he says, well, Jesus, I can't get well because to get well, I have to go into the pool first. I have no one to help me. And so he explains, he goes into an explanation about why it's not possible for him to be well, even though he believes in healing. He believes in healing, but he has this explanation, this way of thinking in his own mind that explains why he cannot get well. How does that make sense? He believes God can do it, but he has a, an explanation for Jesus as to why it will not happen. That's what he... But that's not the question that Jesus asks him. See, the problem is he has only one understanding of how healing could happen. Just one understanding. And you know, God is much bigger than that. Sometimes the healing that God brings can happen through the hospital and the doctors and the medications. Sometimes it can happen in an instant with a word. Sometimes it can happen when we pray over time. Sometimes we open the word of God and read it and there is a miracle takes place. But look at how this miracle happens. Let's go back to the story. 
See, he, he only knew one way, but Jesus knew a different way for him to find his healing. Jesus knew a different way that he could be healed. Jesus knew a way where this man would not be excluded like he was with the stirring of the waters. Because the way that Jesus knew was different to the way of the pool and the waters. He was, the way that Jesus offered was very simple. He says to him, you need to listen to what I say to you and do it and you will be healed. You need to listen to what I say, do what I say. I wonder, when I, when I think about this man, I think maybe he was praying to God. I think he was saying, God, would you please send me someone who will help me get into the water so I can be healed? Well, God did send him someone. God sent him someone who would speak a word and when he acted on that word, he was healed. He found his healing. So here's the thing. On this ordinary day, Jesus came to this man and he, he did not come to the man to say, I will help you to be healed. He came to the man and he invited the man away from his own thinking about healing to step into the word that Jesus gave him to act on it in order to receive his healing. Now this is not the only time that something like this happens where Jesus does not fit into our plans he invites us to step into his plans. John 5, verse 8. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once, at once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. In other words, instead of forever waiting by the pool, which was the only understanding he had about healing, Jesus comes and says, pick up your mat and walk. And he did, and it worked. Wow. That's a much better way than waiting for the way you understand. Now, the key in this story is the day that Jesus came and spoke to him and he was prepared to listen to what Jesus said and act on what he said. That's what made the difference. And this is not the only time that we read about things like this. Remember in John chapter 2, there was a wedding Jesus and all the disciples and his mother and his relatives were at a wedding. And there was a problem at the wedding. The problem was, very important problem, they ran out of wine to drink. And his mother comes in, in that culture. In that culture, it was a very great shame for the family to have run out of wine at a wedding celebration. And so his mother comes to him and says, we have a problem. And then she says to the servants, whatever you say to do, whatever he tells you to do, you go and do it. Again, it's the same thing. Whatever he says, that's what you need to do. Whatever he says to you, that's what you need. So he says, well, they have these big... Um, uh, barrels of water for washing their feet, big washing jugs. And Jesus says, you go and fill those with water. And the servants 
went off, nobody else knew it was a secret. The servants went off, they filled these big flasks with water, and then when they came back, the water had turned into wine. I don't know if the water was wine when it came out of the well, or if it became wine when it, when it, uh, we don't know when the miracle happened. We just know that they did exactly what Jesus said to do and the miracle happened. Then there was a, yes, that's right. Then there was another time when Jesus was teaching the, uh, the people and the people were crowding in and uh, he was close to the waters. So he turned around and he saw a fishing boat. And Simon Peter was on the fishing boat. And Jesus said, excuse me, can I borrow your boat? And so he stepped into the boat and he was on the boat, on the water, in the boat, on the water. And he sat there or stood there and he began to teach all the people who were on the land. And he he taught them and spoke words of truth to them, spoke the good news to them. And then when he had finished, he says to Peter, now a special gift to say thank you for letting me use your boat. Go out into deep water and throw out your nets. And Peter says, oh, we've been out all night and we caught nothing but because you say we will do what you say and he goes out and they throw out the net and when they try to pull it in the nets are almost breaking because there are so many fish all night nothing and now, just because Jesus said, do it again, they go out, they throw the nets out, and there are so many fish, they have to call another boat. And both the boats, with their nets, were almost sinking under the crowd of fish that they were able to catch. Why? because they did what Jesus said to do. You know, I, sometimes we, we get a fixed idea when we need a healing or we need a miracle. And you know, maybe your miracle is, is uh, you need a miracle of healing in your marriage. And your idea is, I know how to heal my marriage. My husband needs to change. And we have a fixed idea about what should happen. And we don't get our miracle. Our fixed idea, whatever it is, whatever it may seem, we have to let go of our reasoning because we just don't know enough. I do not know enough to be God. I do not know what God knows. When God looks at our life, he sees the miracle that we need, but he knows he is the only one who knows what we need to do to make room for that miracle to happen. We have to let go of our own ideas. We have to let go of our own reasoning and we have to come in faith. Jesus, you tell me what to do. And as I obey what you say to me, I expect that maybe I will see the miracle today. Maybe the miracle will not come for one week or one year. But I expect if I am obeying what you are saying to me, then every day, every step I take, I am getting closer. I am walking closer to the miracle 
that only Jesus can do. You know, I, I think about this man who is sick for 38 years. His legs just do not work for all of this time. And one ordinary day, Jesus came and he stopped. He said, do you want to be well? And he answered, well, Jesus, here are all the reasons why I cannot get well. And, and Jesus says, let me give you another way. Get up, pick up your mat and walk. Now, can you imagine that man? He could have said, no, that won't work. I think I might have thought, hmm, I don't know if that will work. But Jesus didn't say, look, if you don't want to do that, here's another thing to try. You know, Jesus does not have a plan B. His plan A is to do what he says. And there is not a plan B that says, if you do not want to do what he says, try this. He just says, just do what I say. Do what I say. Listen to what I say to you and do it. So this man, get up, pick up my mat, walk. Maybe Jesus, maybe he thought Jesus is crazy. Does he know that my legs have not worked for 38 years? How can there be muscle strength? How can I stand up? How can I pick up my mat? How can I just walk? How can I do that? But see, this man, he didn't argue. He, there was something about the fact that it was Jesus speaking to him, that he says, if, if that's what you say, that's what I will act on. And it's the same at the wedding. The servants, when Jesus said, go and fill up those bowls, those big washing basins with water, the servants didn't say, oh, that's not a very good idea. They didn't say, do you know how many feet have been washed in those bowls? He didn't say, the servants didn't argue. They just heard what Jesus said. And Jesus' mother had said to them, look, whatever he says, just do that. And that's what they did. And as a result, it was a different kind of miracle, but it was a miracle. It wasn't a miracle of getting up and walking. It was a miracle of provision. So we know that following Jesus' word is a miracle of provision as well. Then the third one, the fish. When Peter knows that all night long he has fished and fished and fished and he is exhausted and they have come back to shore, and here is this man on the shore teaching. And the man turns around and says, oh, it's good that you're here. Can I borrow your boat? You know, Peter could have said, no, it's my boat. We are busy washing out the boat because we've been fishing all night. We're busy fixing the nets and preparing for the next time. But he lets Jesus get into the boat and Jesus teaches, teaches, teaches and then he says, okay now, you just go out to deeper water and throw the nets in again. Can you feel Peter, oh, oh Lord, we've been out all night all night, right? All night. They haven't had a sleep yet. We've been out all night. We worked hard all night. 
we caught nothing. We came back with nothing. And Jesus says, I've got a plan. This ordinary day that Jesus came along. Suddenly, what happened last night is not the important thing. Whatever you did last night that didn't work doesn't matter. When Jesus says, do it, the miracle is there. And so Peter was obedient and they took the boat out and they had an abundance. Maybe God had a microphone in the ocean calling all fish. Come, come, come into the net. Doesn't matter how the miracle happened, it was a miracle. It was a miracle of a gift to Peter. After nothing, the only thing that worked was listening to what Jesus said and obeying it. You know, in each of those stories, the only thing that worked for a miracle, the only thing that worked for healing, the only thing that worked for provision was, was very simple. On that ordinary day when Jesus came and gave an instruction, they followed it and it was a miracle. They received a miracle. Are you with me? Okay, praise God. <clears throat> There's a couple of just simple challenges that these things bring to us. I think the first challenge is the challenge to let go. When we uh, have one fixed idea about how something should happen, and we need to let it go. Now, I don't know if that is you this morning, but maybe you have had, you want something to happen and you've got a fixed idea about how you want it to happen. And I believe that Jesus would challenge you this morning. So let it go. Don't hold on to what you think. Don't commit yourself to your own understanding. Don't commit yourself to your way and try and get Jesus to fix things your way or to bring a miracle the way you want. That's not how miracles happen. He invites us into a place of hearing his word and being prepared to obey. So that's the first thing, the letting go letting go of our way and being open to hear what he says and being willing to do whatever it is that he says in order to see his miracle come to pass. And the second challenge is just simply this. Jesus came to the man and said, do you want to be well? I think when we think of all the stories, he could be saying to us this morning, do you want that miracle to happen? Whether it's a miracle of provision, whether it's a miracle of healing, whether it's a miracle of family, to do with your family, or to do with your heart. Do you want that miracle to happen? Let go of your own thoughts, let go of your own ways and just come to hear what Jesus would say today for you to do to see that come to pass. Would you stand with me? Hallelujah. Let's just reach out our hands to the Lord this morning. We sang songs that built our faith this morning. Just allow the Lord to stir your faith. 
And I want to invite you this morning to come. I want to invite you to come to the front so that we can pray with you. Before you do that, I want, if you have your own ideas, let it go. But if you know today that this is the day when Jesus is coming to speak to you, then I want to invite you to come, to bring your need before him very specifically, whatever that need is, in order to hear and believe that he is going to bring that miracle into your life. So as we begin to sing, come to the front this morning. Come to the front and open your heart to what God will say. Come now as we sing. Whether you are broke or broken, God has the answer. Hallelujah. 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 You cannot receive your miracle by all the explanations you already have. The only way is to hear God. Hear God first. I believe in that. You hear Jesus. Jesus makes a way. Jesus makes a way when there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. He will speak the word. You receive a miracle. Hallelujah.
Just raise your hands together and say, Lord, speak to me. I'm all ears. I'm all ears. Speak to me, Lord. Hallelujah. That's the reason why Jesus is called the Word. In the beginning was the Word. Hallelujah. He is God's Word. He is the Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm all ears. I'm listening. I have ears to hear. Hallelujah. Speak life to your people, O oh Lord. Speak life. Speak freedom. Speak healing. Speak provision. Speak miracle, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for my brothers and sisters there out there, Lord. In the crowd, I pray God that you will touch them. Hallelujah. What man cannot do, you can do. What doctors cannot do, Lord Jesus, you can do. What money cannot do, dear Lord, you can do. What lawyers, what education, what government can do, Lord Jesus, you can do. I love you, Jesus. Deliver your people, O oh Lord. Give them deliverance. Give them freedom. Give them provisions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We doubt. Throw away the doubts. We just believe God. We just trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can do what He says He will. Jesus can do what He said He will do. Hallelujah. We trust You, Lord. You can do what You said You, you, you will do. Lord, we, we will not accept. We will not accept explanations that we have accumulated in the past. We can only accept what You say, Lord. It's what You say that matters, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. We have heard all these explanations, Lord. We have heard all these explanations. Your word is what matters, Lord. Bible tells us one time he spoke to the waves and the waves obey he spoke to the winds and the winds obey hallelujah hallelujah when there was nothing before all creation the word of God was heard and the word of God says let there be light 
and there was light powerful word God is so powerful he spoke everything into existence when he speaks high mountain trembles when he speaks clouds and rain begins to appear when he speaks vegetation animals over the lands begin to appear when he spoke fish and all other living creatures started to appear God is a powerful God hallelujah and you know what he is our father he is our father in heaven amen hallelujah hallelujah if you have trusted God and you believe that he is performing something in your life doing provisions doing healing I just want you to give thanks to him it's good to be grateful amen just give thanks to him all glory belongs to him honor belongs to him he is worthy pasalamati ang Diyos hallelujah Lord today all explanations has no effect on us you have spoken to our hearts Lord Lord today all our reasoning is foolish foolishness Lord you spoke a word and everything is done thank you so much Lord you spoke the word and that miracles take place in our life oh Lord and just we thank you Lord hallelujah Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Lord hallelujah come on thank you thank, thank the Lord Lord thank you you will perform miracles hallelujah be it unto me according to your word fulfill your word Lord what you have spoken thank you so much oh God hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus